Hey guys, Dark Humility here. You can always catch me at twitch.tv forward slash Dark Humility for six to seven days a week of Diablo action. Today, we've got a special guide here for you. We have the Endgame Chain Lightning Sorcerer or Sorceress. Um, I will be showing you guys the gear, skills, paragon, and a demo of a level 85 chain lightning sorcerer also show you guys the end game enchantment you can check out this guide including its progression uh stages from level 50 all the way up to this end game point on max roll and this video guide will be embedded in there as well so you, of course you can refer to the fact that there are transition points like going from arc lash to flame shield and of course, uh, from um, arc, uh, from like chain lightning enchantment to arc lash enchantment, and then to teleport enchantment, which is what we have here. So these are our enchants. Pretty simple stuff here. Um, I guess we'll go over the skills first on this character, and then the paragon, and then the gear. So we have. Firebolt, that's just for Firebolt enchantment, and you need a minimum of two skills. Maximum mana is a really good thing to have here. Um, in the endgame guide on Maxwell, I think currently it will say only put one point here. It's kind of up to you, but having more maximum mana allows you to discharge more at maximum crit chance. So you can choose to put some points here, um, one or more. Elemental Dominance, kind of same situation, one or more. Chain Lightning, Destructive Chain Lightning. Um, this is about to be buffed actually in patch 1.1.1. This is actually going to be a demo right before a pretty big buff to this build, which will require maybe using a Burr's Mastery aspect, which will not be shown here. But, um, and of course, they'll also be buffing this. Destructive Chain Lightning and also Greater Chain Lightning. Uh, if you can have your mana solved by extra mana aspects, you could maybe go Greater Chain Lightning once the patch drops. But for this, Crackling Energy is super solid and it means that we don't have to use multiple aspects to regenerate our mana. Uh, one or more into Elemental Attunement, resetting your defensive cooldowns is good. Enhanced Flame Shield. Flame Shield is your one of your main sources of immunity. Running faster to get away or to move through the monsters for immobilize is very useful. Uh, damage Reduction Teleport. We don't have this maxed out. However, we have a lot of ranks on it from here. And this is going to be pretty important. We have Max Glass Cannon here. That's also very good for damage. Oh, we even have an extra ring from Raymond of the Infinite. And of course, Frost Nova. Frost Nova, you're going to want to max that out. You'll notice there's 12 rings of Frost Nova on here. Uh, that is not an accident. You really want to get that cooldown as low as possible so you're constantly stunning and freezing enemies for maximum damage and for survivability. Uh, Ice Armor, one point mana regeneration while it's active. Uh, these types of things just tend to be very solid in general. Uh, you could even go like one extra point down here if you want monsters to freeze themselves, but typically Frost Nova does the job for you, so you don't have to do that. One or more points in a precision magic is really good. Extra lucky hit chance. Um, so this is also something that is a bit more typical maybe for hardcore. Uh, it's not recommended yet in the guide, but I might actually modify it the actual guide itself, written guide to have this because it was buffed recently. Um, once that new chain lightning update goes through, makes sense to max out all of your survivability stuff. And since they buffed the line, the elements, it's better just passively, but you could even put more points into this for more reliable high DR against elites. It's not bad the way they buffed it. Uh, defenses are very good. Devouring blaze is nerfed, but it's still very strong. You could even get an amulet with extra ranks into it for more damage. Uh, it's not insanely important to do that though anymore because it's not nearly as powerful as it once was, but it's still very good. Uh, 
This is how I restore mana. You don't have to put three points into this. Um, it's only one of the ways you restore mana. However, it's very, very useful. Um, I would put at least like two to three points into that though. Of course, uh, down here, unstable currents. Uh, this is not a crackling energy build. So you don't have to worry about supreme unstable currents. That's not a thing. And then of course, uh, max electrocution, another very good source of damage reduction on this build. Um, additionally, of course, if you uh, want to maybe take some points out of other things or defensive abilities or mana, you can also have another source of stun from convulsions as it shows in the guide currently. And then this is definitely going to be the approach when the patch drops and it's already the approach on the guide. So you're going to want to go for burst mastery, uh, pretty insane damage and DR boost. And uh, that aspect and the buff to the base skill itself is going to make this really strong potentially. So you're going to want to do all that cool stuff. And that stuff is all very, very solid. So there you go for the skill tree. Let's go to the Paragon. So the Paragon board, pretty straightforward. Um, going to want to hit up all of those damage nodes. Maximum life on here is good as well to get some extra maximum life. You can see we have at level 85, we have almost 10,000 life. That's very good for pushing those high tier nightmare dungeons. Um, control glyph though on the, the first board is definitely what you're going to want to go for in general. Um, it's not level 21 yet, but we're getting there. Control was also one of the first level 15s you're going to want, but I'd go for destruction first. Um, initially you can put destruction on the second board, but, uh, then I can switch it to flame feeder because destruction works better on the highest dex board, which is board number four, but either way, level 15 on that one as well. going to want all these stun nodes here on the static surge board. So that's what this is. And getting that node there is a priority. Um, it's one of the main ways we merge into arc lash enchantment for mana restoration and then once we get raiment of the infinite which is a unique armor we can take the arc lash enchantment off switch it to teleport enchant and still benefit from this big time and it's a very very important source of mana restoration on a build that has two sources of teleport that are extremely reliable so you're definitely going to want to use that and that's definitely like one of your main mana generators on this build especially the farther you deeper you go into the end game the more important this becomes and you can definitely drop other types of mana generation sources and other things as long as you have that <laughs> and then of course maxim mana is really good it helps keep our mana above 100 for elementalist aspect which is something we use on this build uh, damage to stunned enemies, once again, just really good stuff for the rare nodes, damage in general. Vulnerable damage is very good here too. Um, once we get a bit more willpower, we'll even hit 20% more bone on that as well. Got cold resistance. Territorial is really nice to have. Um, it's just extra DR. This is a close combat build. Um, it is meant to jump directly into the enemies, electrocuting everything around you. And we will, of course, show that off. But yeah, um, extra damage to... I, I, I wouldn't put this one on one of your higher dex nodes because it's not that important uh, to do so for extra damage to close enemies. But you already get a ton of damage as well. So this one's definitely deserves a spot, though. Absolutely. Uh, I think they're going to buff this, too. So they're going to give you even more DR, I think, like 15%. So you may as well uh, check that one out. Um, now on the actual guide, it doesn't say to do this, but if you want even more survivability for pushing those really high nightmare dungeons, uh, this is an idea here. You can definitely, um, go for even more of the armor nodes, but otherwise just make sure you hit the damage to burning enemies, the DR for burning enemies, make sure you get all the decks around here. And, um, yeah, this is probably the best place as a final resting place for destruction glyph, but, um, honestly, it's not a big difference switching flame feeder and destruction here you can just kind of put them whichever one first destruction's a higher priority than flame feeder though uh, just to get online initially so that uh that crit strike damage is no joke absolutely no joke 
So make sure to get that going. We have Kindling as well, just damage to elites and burning enemies, which is pretty insane. This next board here um, is of course shown on the Maxwell Guide. I believe it's called Elemental Dominance, and we're gonna be putting the Exploit Glyph there. Um, you can take more defensive glyphs and then uh, not go for a sixth board, but if you go for a sixth board, um, we can switch the positions of Territorial and Tactician if you want, um, and then use Tactician Rare uh, Glyph, and we'll put that on, I think, the fourth board and then swap that position as well. So uh, we can do that as well and go to a sixth board, or we can go to five boards and be more defensive. Overall, though, uh, vulnerable damage, damage to stun enemies, damage to burning enemies, the art of burning. This is the only armor node cluster in the entire Sorceress Paragon, so you can definitely take advantage of that if you want. But to be honest, it's not going to really do all that much because you just have a lot of armor, which is fine. Sorcerer is not thematically an armor character. Uh, she relies a lot on barrier generation, such as from the protective node on the skill tree, which we showed you guys lots of barrier generation. And the higher your life goes, the uh, higher that barrier generation is. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, notice it's 30% of your maximum life as a barrier. So that maximum life stat is actually very important for keeping you alive. Not just for the life stat, but also to improve your barriers so keep that in mind um, as we go through the gear that is why we have it on pretty much everything that can have it on this build uh, this is the weakened armor aspect disobedience with life cooldown reduction and total armor which are like insane stats uh, additionally you can go maximum mana instead of all stats but that all stats does help out your paragon boards to get those bonuses from the rare nodes so that's not terrible honestly pretty solid uh thing here i think ideally though maybe i'd go for maximum mana though just to have even more uh, but you can definitely do that especially if you're going um omni power heart which is something from season one uh, which uh you can totally do that absolutely so raiment of the infinite this thing is definitely your end game armor uh, unfortunately, I haven't found an ancestral version of this. I found this at level 58, oddly enough, super early, uh, which is pretty sick. But now it's starting to show its age. It's also not like the craziest rolls either, but it does the job. He is that you teleport and you uh, close enemies are pulled to you and stunned for two seconds uh, when you use teleport. That includes from teleport enchantment as well. Uh, you can even use Oculus in combination with this and get the same effect. And the monsters will never hit you, but you'll probably get stuck in a wall. And it's not predictable, so it's probably just a meme. Um, I've tested that. It is what it is, but you could definitely do that. It is interesting. Um, it doesn't have any defensive stats, though. As you can see, um, of course, the stun is arguably one of the most defensive stats you could have, period, on anything. Um, but yeah, and if you haven't found this yet, just use Arc Lash Chant um, with that stun mana Paragon board and you'll be fine. Um, however, you're just not going to stun for as often and as reliably, and that will affect your damage output, among other things. So this is definitely the choice to go. Um, Chain Lightning. So this is going to be buffed to four additional times. Um, so... Yeah, Chain Lightning is just going to get stronger for the Unbroken Tether. However, this is a free or a Codex of Power uh, aspect in the that you can access through, from the Season Journey. I think in Chapter 3 or Chapter 4 you can access this. So even if you haven't found this aspect, um, you can actually get that in Season 1 pretty easily. There is... Also, the Frost Nova one. This one is non-negotiable. You need two charges of Frost Nova. Makes everything so much more smooth. Um, it's almost a perfect aspect here. I have a perfect one. I'm kind of waiting for like a perfect pair of pants to show up. Um, if I find another perfect one, though, I'll probably just imprint it on there. Because that's... Pants is just solid defensive stats all the way down. Uh, when they buff Temerity, it would also be possible to use Temerity on this build. Um... 
and just give yourself another barrier. You just want defense, that's all you want. The thing about Temerity though is that you can't have the Frost Nova aspect, so um, you probably have to put your Frost Nova up here, and then you lose the armor, so eh, I probably wouldn't do it, but it's definitely going to become possible. You could do it, possibly. Uh, this thing is pretty incredible. I also have a pair of boots that also gives mana cost reduction, but it only has three ranks of each because it's a sacred. Uh, but the idea here is um, to get... The idea would be mana cost reduction, movement speed, and then four ranks of teleport, four ranks of frost nova. Uh, it, uh, the ranks of these two skills, not any other skill, um, like ice armor or flame shield, reduce their cooldown. So you'll see our cooldowns are incredibly low here. See that cooldown on teleport? And interestingly enough, if you check out teleport enchantment, um, you'll notice here that the cooldown on the teleport itself, uh, on the evade teleport that you get from teleport enchantment, which turns your evade into a teleport, actually is impacted by your ranks into teleport as well. Now you could even decide to put more ranks from your skills too. In your skill tree so this is something you could do um, i'm not doing that because i feel like there's a lot more useful places to put them but you could and you can reduce that cooldown even more so that's definitely an idea there um definitely want frost Nova and teleport cooldowns to be super super low if possible really really low um definitely no doubt about that uh, aspect of control in this, uh, critical strike damage, lightning critical strike, intelligence, you can see ranks of chain lightning critical strike, attack speed, very good stuff. Ideally this one would actually have a uh, lightning critical strike damage as well. So definitely want lots of survivability stats, damage reduction, total armor, maximum life, good stuff in general. Uh, the flame shield one is very good because it allows you to just pass through enemies and then become immune to all damage for a short period of time. And you can immobilize them for pretty long periods of time, which just helps make everything easier as you pass through them. So that's very good. Uh, you can also use like movement speed ones on critical strike and crackling energy. You can even use the one that even creates another source of stun, which is uh, audacity, which is a new one. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, there is a, so over 800 item power weapons. Ideally, you do use one-handers um, because your offhand gives you a ton of cooldown reduction. So, once again, not just ranks into teleport are going to matter. I mean, that matters a tiny bit. But what you really want is that really high CDR, which you see on her helm here and on her shield. Critical strike chance, also a good stat. I think um, resource generation would also be very good here, and so would mana cost reduction. Uh, but overall, all four of those stats are useful, so that's good. Accelerating aspect makes our attack speed insane. That's very good for stacking up that damage. Now, jewelry in Season 1 is interesting because we're not just using skulls for armor anymore. Um, as you can see though, we have ranks of all the defensive skills to reduce their cooldown once again. The cooldown reduction didn't roll high on this, which is the only one that didn't. So this, this is a point of improvement, but you can see the mana cost reduction is huge. Um, it's actually reducing the cost of our core skill by 8 mana, so uh, it's pretty insane. If you don't have your mana cost reduction here, make sure to have it on the boots and the... And the Focus, but ideally you can actually get it on everything and then it will be even smoother in terms of the use of skills. Uh, life, critical strike damage, pretty much want that on, or critical strike chance, you want that on both. And then some kind of damage that you do, like damage to close, damage to stun, damage to frozen, damage to vulnerable, lightning damage, um, damage to burning enemies uh, because of firebolt enchant. You're going to want any combination of those kinds of things. And then, of course, maximum mana is also really good on here, too, on your rings. Now, we should talk about the hearts real quick. Uh, ideally, in Season 1, you're going to want the Revenge Heart, which is what I think this one is here. So, when you use a defensive skill, right? So, defensive skill would count as any of these skills, practically, on your bar. Um, four of your skills count as defensive skills. So, anytime you use that, um, 
you amplify that damage and explode it. So that's kind of useful. But in general, you also just get 17% DR from this. Now you can get up to 20%. That's even better. This thing's just crazy defense, considering that we're going to be going all in. And of course, with Elementalists, uh, we get our crit strike chance to 100 or even over 100. We're actually getting to the point in the game where I could probably imprint this aspect somewhere else because we have enough critical strike chance elsewhere. You're going to want as close to 100% crit strike chance as possible. Then, of course, this aspect is changing. It's going to be mana off of every bounce off of anything, and that's going to be really sick. It's going to be lower. I think it's 2 to 3 instead of 4 to 6, but it's going to give you mana not just when it bounces off of you. So that's going to be really key uh, to regenerating mana, and it's going to make it even easier to do. Uh, which is one reason why I'm not using Prodigies anymore on this current version of the build. I'm using Retribution. You can also use the Barrier Damage ones, which arguably can give you more damage, but this one also gives you a chance to stun enemies as well that are firing outside of the range of Raiment for Stun or uh, Frost Nova. So, it's not bad. Um, I can definitely get a few more percentage damage, though, by putting on the Barrier Damage one. That one also would work. Uh, but yeah, the Chain Lightning Bounce one, this is the this is the aspect you're still going to want to use in the late game. You're going to want to use the uh, recharging aspect and get all that mana off of every bounce, even when the patch drops. But currently, it only works when it bounces off of you. That's still very useful for single targets, though, so keep that in mind. That's why we are using it. Uh, you can also use Prodigies, though, for the mana one. Early on, when you're using Arc Lash, I think you can also use the uh, Efficiency aspect as well for basic attacks, reducing uh, mana cost of your core skills. But anyway, um, so this is the Revenge Heart. Revenge Heart's very defensive. This is Barber. Barber is insane. They might nerf it at some point, but even if they don't, it's pretty crazy. Um... You, since you're always critting on this build, you're constantly storing up damage and just erupting that damage onto everything, and it just does a crazy amount of damage. And uh, with two seconds, it's just constantly procking on everything. Uh, with a longer period of time, you can actually store and get even crazier damage numbers on single targets. But yeah, it's kind of nuts. Um, you can also use Omni Power on this build, but if you do that, you probably won't want to focus as much on the critical strikes uh, because it works a little weird. Doesn't work quite the same way um, as you might expect. It doesn't just like fire like six chain lightnings and then they all crit and do all the damage they're supposed to. So it's. I would personally just use Barber for now, but yeah, there's definitely some options there. And then this one's really solid. Since almost all your strikes, especially in the end game, are critical strikes, don't worry about losing non-critical strike damage. It's irrelevant. Uh, you don't even do much damage in a non-critical strike anyway. So you may as well just get like another free destruction glyph, which is basically what this is, um, by using the uh, Tempting Fate Heart, which is what this is in here. So, Tempting Fate is just really good. Uh, you could also use Tal Rosh's if you want even more damage, if you don't want the survivability, but this survivability is nuts on the Sorcerer, and arguably I think that damage reduction even applies to your barrier, and then it applies to your life separately, which is kind of nuts. It's kind of like you get like, it's like you're double dipping on that DR possibly. Um, I don't know, they might change that, but yeah, so I, I think these are really solid. And of course you can use other things as well, and you can keep upgrading them. Um, this one's like a level 4 one, so... And if you want like a 4 second one, you can get that. And like I said, definitely try out the Omnipower approach as well. Okay. So... Showed off the Teleport Enchantment. Convert our Evade into Teleport. Um, we're gonna be bouncing around like a ping pong ball. And of course, in the way that we want. That's why we're not using Oculus. If you want to just bounce around like a ping pong ball and just have fun, you can also use the Oculus, and it does synergize with this build. 
but you'll probably get stuck in something and it's not very efficient so once again fun stuff there all right so what we're gonna do now that we showed off the skills the paragon and the gear and explain these enchantments firebolt enchant applying that burning damage is just really big when it comes to taking advantage of the burning instinct board which is what this is getting all of that damage to burning enemies bonuses and then of course taking advantage of devouring blaze particularly down here but teleport enchantments where the real magic happens and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a tier 49 core Valar. Now these monsters are quite a bit higher than this, almost 20 levels above us. Um, it's always scary. If, you're a little, if you want to get a little bit more tanky in any situation, we're going to push like higher tier nightmare dungeons, even higher ones than this, which you can definitely do. I can do it already on this character, but I'll just do something that's fairly straightforward here. Uh, you can always pop an armor potion. Holy Papa, Armor Elixir. Armor Elixirs are in general very, very solid approaches. Okay, so let's do this demo here. Let's crush this dungeon. So you might notice here that we can really take advantage of all this mobility. I have both the Evade Teleport and I have the Butt but Teleport. You also notice... There's so many rings in the teleport. My evade teleport cooldown is constantly reset. A little bit more mana cost reduction wouldn't hurt us, but yeah. Pretty solid overall, I'd say. So you just want to jump into the monsters, use Frost of it, and fire. And then of course you can keep bouncing around with your two teleports. I'm going to show off an event here. Things can get kind of crazy in these, but it's okay. We totally are able to control any situation on this character because of how much CC she has. This event's bugged, so they're all gonna die, but it's okay. Bugged as in they just their HP doesn't scale the high level nightmare dungeons, so this is just what you're gonna have. I notice I can always use flame shield to get out of anything. I haven't even gone Super Saiyan yet. I'll do it now. Notice every time I teleport, they just get a two second stun to the face. So if I had a three second Raymond, it would be even more devastating. But I haven't found one yet. It's not on the new season. I have a I have a better one on my Eternal. There you go. Damn! Look at that. It looked like I was ever at risk of dying. Now with certain dungeon affixes, there can be problems sometimes like a volcanic or death pulse, but you have so much mobility you can only just move away from anything and you really want to make sure you're taking advantage of that by constantly using teleport, either the evade, um, either the evade one or the non-evade one. And you get some free DRs here. I almost have enough intelligence for that one too, so the willpower and intelligence can give us some free bonuses here. Oh, oops, wrong direction. That's why you should always check the map. Okay, here we go. Particularly bad with that. Oh well. I well, might notice there, we took a lot of damage. But, okay. Use ice armor to anticipate attacks like that. If you have a barrier, it won't even take much damage from the death explosions, so that's good. It's okay if you die a little bit on softcore, but on hardcore, uh, you really want to beef up this build before doing anything this high for sure. As you know, every Apex at this level is going to hurt. Pretty big time, so. 
Rogue is not the only character that can move fast. With two teleports like this one. I'm not ready yet. Oops, I want to teleport. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Oh, there we go. I noticed that by stunning the enemies, um, we get most of our mana back, so also make sure to use that as a mana regeneration tactic. You can also use um, Ice Armor here as well to sort of do that. If you're using Prodigies for more mana regeneration, um, just use any cooldown at all and you can get more mana back as well. At this stage in the game, we don't really need that though. Notice those uh, crackling en energy spheres are very solid. You can just alternate teleports. And if you have movement speed on your amulet, you can even run faster through this too as you teleport. It's always nice to have your cooldowns, uh... <laughs> uh, you have, uh, nothing require any resources in your cooldowns being lowered. That's always good. Not like we really need it much on this build, because our cooldowns are so low anyway, but, you know. You notice I can just double teleport, triple teleport. Keep using teleport, man. Keep doing it. Barber is kind of nuts, but even without Barber, we do some pretty serious damage with this build. Kind of cool to see, though, just how powerful something like this can do uh, be with uh, stacking all this damage. All right. I'm not ready yet. And so now be doing this as well. If you're ever out of mana, let's go collect some spheres. And you'll be good. Collect some spheres, jump on enemies and teleport to stun them. One thing to note though is that only your main teleport works as an unstoppable break. The teleport cooldown is not as an unstoppable break. I mean the evade ones from teleport enchantment. You can use other enchantments by the way, but having two teleports is just so good on this build with Raiment because the Raiment does stun them with teleport enchantment. You can see, I think the main problem with doing like a tier 100 at this point would not be damage. Uh, or damage is pretty insane. It's probably just the ability to survive. Once we get to like level 100 though, I'll definitely be doing that. Especially with the nerf tier 100, which is more like an old tier 70. I think it's reasonable to expect we can do it even on a close quarters build like this. Especially if we use like a 900 armor potion or something of that nature. We'll be pretty good. Yeah, notice how fast that evade teleport resets. Pretty insane. Now, three bosses isn't ideal because of re the way recharging works currently, but the way recharging will work will allow us to have even more mana because it will just work off of anything that we hit. 
not just when it bounces off of itself. But you can notice, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of mana problems here, but that's okay. Nothing too major. The more monsters, though, the better, and the more it's going to absolutely smash when you jump into the monsters. But that's it. That's the demo. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. She's an absolute beast. And uh, Chain Lightning in Season 1 is on the up and up. As you can see, even at level 85, and even without all of our armor and power, you know, Sessual Raymond's pretty big. Hopefully we'll find that. Um, maybe find some more armor here. Maybe even get mana cost reduction on a couple more pieces. Uh, this thing will be an absolute monster. But at any rate... It's already pushing though tier 50 and um, it will push of course beyond that. I think it already can do like 60s and 70s but I'll wait till a higher level to do higher than that. At any rate, hopefully you guys enjoyed the Chain Lightning Sorcerer Guide. I will post the, um, you guys will have chapters for every section of this guide to refer to different parts of it. And remember to refer to the Maxwell Guide for completely updated information and thorough information on all options for this build. And of course, the general progression arc that you should follow so that you can get to this point. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. A Dark Humility over and out. Let's get it.